confirm that everyone can see uh, my screen. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, today's topic is dev space and how it could help us to streamline uh, the Kubernetes development workflow. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, we will see what is the dev space, what, what, what is this tool, what it does and what can we use it for, how it works, uh, how we can use it to deploy uh, Kubernetes workload into local mini cube Kubernetes cluster, just for local development, and how we can easily switch between Kubernetes context and if we need, we can uh, deploy uh, microservices into the cloud Kubernetes like uh, Google Cloud Engine. And also, basically, actually, the most part of this, uh, of our meeting today will be a demo. I will uh, try to live code a little bit, and that will be uh, a majority of our, our presentation today. So, Okay, what is DevSpace? DevSpace is a client-only developer, developer tool, allowing a developer to build application directly inside Kubernetes cluster. Well, it is not always directly, I must say, but yeah, we'll get to it, we'll see how it works. Uh, it supports hot reloads, allowing to, to deploy the changes in the code like right away uh, without passing along a pipeline where we need to, uh, let's say, build a binary or a jar file if we develop in Java, uh, package it into the container, uh, then uh, pull this container and deploy it in the Kubernetes cluster. So that, that's a long path and that's kind of a uh, normal workflow uh, for Kubernetes de workload deployment. But what we as developers, developers, what we want, we want to uh, speed up this process and to apply and see, uh, to apply outside changes and see how uh, they affect our application right away without waiting too much. Uh, so, <clears throat> okay, the demo. So, I will have a mini cube Kubernetes cluster on my laptop, and also I will deploy a GKE. Google Kubernetes Engine cluster. Uh, let's start from the uh, from the mini cube. I think I'm good to. Okay. Okay, uh, so I, I think I'm going to wrap up this presentation for now. Um, what we have here is, uh, so we have a mini cube. Kubernetes cluster up and running, at least it should be uh, that scene. Yeah, it's running. So, um, okay, uh, nothing is deployed yet here. 
So that's what we are going to get to right now. So uh, what I have is um, really Go application with the HTTP server written in Go, which uh, which uh, writes hello world to the to the web page. And yeah, and what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to uh, use the simplest approach, simplest way to uh, start working with uh, the dev space here. So what I'm going to do is. Okay, let's remove some stuff from previous builds. Okay, uh, yeah, I think this is good. So I'm typing the space in it. Okay, so it suggests us to pick up a programming language that we are going to use which is Go, so it can see that uh, the initialization process can see that this is Go, so we are going to pick up. Uh, by default, DevSpace uses Helm charts, like by default it's unified Helm chart uh, capable of deploying some uh, uh, some easy, not, not complicated uh, workloads, but also, of course, we can use our own custom home charts if, if we need, or we can use kubectl or customize whatever we prefer. So uh, I stick with using default help chart. And uh, if we don't have uh, our own help chart, like in our case, we can choose uh, this option, which will allow us to uh, deploy our workload using default unified from chart. Okay, it said that uh, it suggests us to deploy uh, this project uh, using code from current working directory. Okay, I agree. So here we have the Docker file, which I prepared uh, prior to the demo because the Docker file uh, we have to use. So, okay, so really simple uh, Docker file. And as you can see, I'm going to use uh, as a base image, I, I'm going to use uh, Alpine uh, Linux image with Go language installed because I'm going to do some debugging inside the container. Normally, um, we would prefer to build a binary out of this code that we have and just copy this binary to very lightweight container uh, and to run. But here, uh, we are going to stick with this option. Uh, okay. So yeah, and we are exposing port number 8080 80 to connect to, uh, to be able to connect to this web server. All right. So. I'm going to use the uh, existing Docker file. And for now, I'm going to skip uh, uh, specifying the container registry, but we can use uh, the Docker Hub or GitHub image registry and also any container registry we want. For now, I'm going just to skip it. I'm going to use only the uh, uh, only the local images. Uh, you might ask me uh, how you're going to hey Andre, how you're going to uh, deploy something to Google Kubernetes engine. You have to uh, to push some images, at least one image, to to the uh, to some 
publicly available uh, GCR uh, container registry, but okay, let, let's get to it. Uh, I'm skipping using registry for now. All right, so uh, now I'm going to specify space because I'm going to use uh, my own namespace. Uh, for this exercise, not not the default one. Uh, okay, so for now we don't have any such dev, uh, dev space, and even after specifying it, we still don't have it in the cluster because it uh, this command means that when we run the deployment, uh, after that uh, the, the the namespace will be created. Uh, all right, uh, let's go. So the easiest way is to run the space dev. Uh, as you could see, uh, dev space skipped building the image itself. That's because uh, the available image is already uh, matches all the instructions. So uh, in, in this instruction that I have here, uh, there, there isn't anything new. So I already have this image. And yeah. Uh, this part I don't really like because uh, like by default it put uh, the space put my files to the to this subfolder and it suggests to manually go and run uh, it suggests manually run the uh, the go application. Yeah, it's up and running. And if I show you this page, hmm, I'm wondering why why it is unable to render this HTML code. But anyway, okay. So uh, uh, the service is responding, and everything works as expected. But uh, what if we want to change something in this code? Okay, let's just uh, make it H1. Uh, as you can see, by default, uh, like nothing happened. Uh, uh, despite all promises that it, it uh, that dev space is capable of syncing files right away and, and making port reloads. For this case, it doesn't work. So, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, skip this part. I'm going to exit from that container uh, development environment. I'm going to remove uh, some files here that I'm not going to need. All uh, right. This default dev space of right. Let me copy it somewhere. Right. And let me replace. Let me replace this file. All right, so uh, I have uh, my customized uh, the space yum file, which basically specifies uh, specifies my de deployment workflow. So uh, let me uh, highlight some essential things. We have our images here. For our case, we're using just an image here. 
we are using this Docker file from the, from the uh, work directory where we are running uh, the dev, dev space command. We are using uh, the context of, from that some, same uh, working directory. And also uh, we want to, uh, to use like right randomize the tags here. So we are using this APP prefix. And this this is the native uh, variable for uh, dev space, which uh, actually adds random tag to the, to the container name. All right, so the deployment. So how it works. Uh, first, we need to deploy our service, right? Uh, and then, once it's up and running, so so to, to deploy the service as a service, we are using that same default help chart, uh, which is offered by DevSpace itself. We are not using our own for now. Uh, we are using this image to run the container. And we want to expose this port to be able to connect to the HTTP server. And the uh, development uh, workflow, actually uh, the development process, actually finds uh, by uh, this image selector. It's not really nice here. It's better to use some labels here, but okay, that will work for us. So uh, basically uh, the development process will find this uh, container which is run, uh, run using this image and will uh, uh, get attached to it. Yeah, everything else I just oh. All right, uh, so let's let's do it like this. Going to delete the uh, the namespace manually, and and I'm going to create an empty one. Okay. Three. All right. So uh, now I'm going to use oh, the typo. Yeah, I'm going to use this command to deploy uh, our microservice. Actually, it uses this uh, part of the deployment section here. So let's see. Uh, it's interesting, but now it's rebuilt the uh, it rebuilt the image itself. And if we go to the Uh, Kubernetes cluster. We can see that the application pod is up and running. Okay. We are going to use the uh, kubectl port forward command. But first, let me see. Oh, come on. kubectl get we see. <clears throat> yeah, we are using this service. So what we are going to do is we're going to use 
Okay. 80, 80, 80. <clears throat> oh, come on, stop. Okay. <clears throat> Let's switch to another class. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, we should be able to get response from the HTTP server that we, uh, that we run. Yeah, here, here we go. And I'm wondering if, yeah, now it got rendered. Uh, anyway, so, uh, now that we uh, can see the uh, how uh, the service itself, the application, uh, the web page that it generates looks like, we can get to uh, doing some changes. And let's see uh, how uh, that everything works. Okay, so. Um, Um, I don't know, let's say I want to add uh, more exclamation marks here. Again, right away nothing happens. And even if I do, Even if I run the development here, okay, it only connected to the to the cluster and like again, nothing happened here. Okay, so uh, what I can do, I can use the space pink command. Uh, I can even specify the path from which local folder and to reach uh, a fo a folder inside the container. I'm going to uh, copy some file here. Okay, initial sync is completed. But still, uh, I'm pretty sure that here nothing changes. So uh, the only thing that I can do right now is to Delete running port. Okay. Port. Okay. Think the the sync failed. No, that was not a good idea because all, all changes that uh, that was copied, they are gone. Uh, anyway, okay. So what I can do, we should see completed, so let's see. If anything changed, okay. That's weird because uh, the service itself, it shouldn't, okay. 
where is port forward? Well, I I think I. I interrupted the port forward. Yeah. Let's see, it's not here. I don't think it's here. Yeah, yeah, it got interrupted. Okay. Nothing changed, man. Nothing changed anyway. Okay, uh, let me. What I can do? I can do this. I can. Exact into the pod. It, that's not not how it's supposed to do because this tool that I'm presenting is supposed to do to do it automatically all, all the things but anyway okay let me try to Yes, I have to exec into this container and I have to, oh, come on, I, I, I cannot just, yeah, <laughs> that just kills the container itself. Uh, okay. Oh, it's interesting. Why? Why is it that? Okay. What if I run the deployment? But that, that's not interesting. Like, I, I can do it without. Did it? Did it? I run the port forward. Well, again, again, it, it didn't affect anything. Okay, I saved the file, right? I. Okay, what I what I can do? Uh, I can try to trigger uh, the image rebuild, and also what I can do, I can change a little bit the Docker file because, like, in reality, uh, we would like to use the binary file here, and we would like to use the uh, um, build stage. And use this container with Go language inside to build the binary, and then we would like to copy uh, that binary to to the more right weight container here. I will show you in a minute. Okay, so synchronization probably would work. Just give me a second. Okay, my repository is
Right, so I'm going to modify my Docker file a little bit. Yeah, we keep it like this. We are adding as base here. We, we are going to keep this one like this. Uh, and here we are going to have this run stage. Yeah. We are going to copy, uh, we are going to uh, compile this binary here. And then we are going to copy that binary inside that same container that we are going to use to uh, to run the application. Okay. All right. Now, in this dev space YAML file, I'm going to change the image name because it's going to be different, not this one. Okay. This one. And here. Okay, and this is it. Okay, this is the development, this is the deployment. And um, yeah, of course, we need to change this one here. All right. Let's try to deploy it. Uh, so what I expect, it should uh, build an intermediate image, which would contain this binary file. And then it uh, would build the resulting image. Uh, and, okay, it's not being built. Yes, like this. Uh, and, in this resulting image, we will have only the uh, basic Linux Alpine operating system and this binary, and this is it. And we will run it uh, to have our, our web server up and running. Uh, anyway, let's try to do that. So if I run the deploy again, do. Okay, it's rebuilding the uh, image. All right. Let's see what we have in the Kubernetes cluster. All right, so this is the new one, right? It's up and running, and I'm wondering, okay, let's run again. Let's see. Yeah, uh, finally, uh, we can see those changes, <clears throat> but, um, all right, 
still we need to redeploy anything. It's it's not about uh, port reloading. Uh, maybe it, it would be easier if we would use uh, Python. Uh, but you know, anyway, uh, so at least we, we got the result. And now let's try to let's try to change something else. Add some more signs here. And if we rerun the deployment here, let's see if it works. So the <clears throat> the binary file should got rebuild rebuild it. All right. And let's see. Yeah. It's interesting, but in this case, uh, the port itself did not go to stop. And, and if we go here, nothing changed here as well. So, but now I'm pretty sure that uh, I delete this port. It will create a new one. And reconnect and put forward. Yeah, so that's how we uh, uh, are forced to uh, to synchronize everything, which is, to be honest, which is not what I expected. I I would expect to this, this thing, like all this hot reloading things and everything. Anyway, uh, at least we were able somehow to use this tool uh, to uh, in, in our development process. Um, what else we can do? Let me do one more thing here. Okay. So if we look into the log of the logs of this uh, code, okay, we can do it using using the dead space as far as I remember. Stream the logs, okay. All right. Uh, again, we can use some labels here uh, and things like that, but let's start from some, something. Okay, this is our board. Yeah, and we can stream this logs. Okay, for now it only uh, prints that the service was started and it's that it's listening on port number 88. Okay, I want uh, to see the logs uh, on each HTTP request. So I'm going to change this code a little bit. I'm going to add to import the log module here. And I'm going to Going to add this logger here, which handles the the HTTP request. And what else I need to do? I need to put this log request here as an argument. All right, All right. Good. Again, to synchronize everything, uh, 
I will need to run the deployment. Uh, maybe uh, I have an idea. Maybe it doesn't pull the images. It tries to pull the images as, as little as possible. Uh, anyway. So when, uh, but, but again, the report did not got restarted. Like right now, it did not get got restarted. But okay, I, I have a new brand new image. So if I delete the pod here, Kubernetes will create a brand new pod for me. And here in this pod, so uh, nothing's gonna change it, uh, 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 gonna change in terms of, uh, yeah. That's the port forwarding. Yeah, if we got to deploy it to GKE, maybe it would be nicer in terms of uh, port exposing and everything. Okay. Anyway, should be good. Yeah, it's not running. And if we go to the, if you stream the logs, Oh, okay, we are streaming the logs using using that space. Yeah, and if we go here and reload this one, we got new one, or if we do Something like this. Okay, let me let me do it like this. I'm going to use curl to send some requests. Okay, sorry, iPhone. Yeah, it's in the logs, right? Okay, if I add the If I add the infinite loop here, yeah, as you can see, we can we can stream the logs. Okay. Anyway, uh, so we were able somehow to deploy. Uh, really simple go web application into mini cube Kubernetes cluster using dev space. Uh, it wasn't that nice as I would like to expect, but still uh, we were able to do that. Uh, what now? Uh, let's try to go ahead and deploy the, the, this same thing into the GKE Kubernetes cluster. Oh, but the thing is, I I never uh, <laughs> I never deployed it, so uh, we will have some time, and I'll initiate the deployment process. Uh, and uh, while it's running, we can uh, discuss something, we can ask some questions, and so on. So okay, first I, I'm going to deploy this uh, GKE Kubernetes using Terraform that I prepared. But uh, first, let's uh, let's connect to the web console, to, uh, GCP web console. Okay, we have this project here, uh, so probably we don't need to create a new one. Anyway, uh, so let's go to the server here, and we have some modules here. The project is already created. Uh, now I'm going to make sure that uh, the services that we need are enabled. Yeah, I'm not sure that we're going to need this one, but anyway, this one we did not. We are going to need. Okay. Uh, 
Mm. I need to authenticate those child give me. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am authenticating again this uh Okay, uh, it, let me copy this temporary code and paste it. Um, yeah, I got authenticated. All right. This one we don't need anymore. Right, help. So, I'm going to run Terraform. We need just in case, but I think we'll, we'll depend. This is already there. I'm running Terraform plan. And it should. All right. Yeah, the infrastructure module, the configuration. Oh, uh, let me make sure manually. If I go to the clusters here, the API, service API should be enabled. Yeah, I can create the cluster, but I'm not going to do it manually. Uh, I'm going, okay, uh, one more thing. I need to create the, Service account for the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it shouldn't take long. Okay, this one has to be created. Okay. Oh, really? Okay, this is the uh, project name that I have to fix. Okay, now hopefully it will work. So the service. Service account for Kubernetes uh, cluster should be created. Let's write this. Yeah, service account. Yeah, it got created. And we can see it right here. Okay, now cluster, uh, the Kubernetes cluster that we need to create. Right. Let's just in case, let's make sure. Yeah, it should be four, right? Because we have this. Yeah. Okay. Let's run to four minutes just in case. Okay. Okay, the Kubernetes cluster. I'm running the apply. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gonna take some time. Uh, so uh, guys, maybe you want to uh, ask some questions, discuss something. Maybe uh, somebody of you uh, had experience with this, this same tool and like that experience was better than we had today. Any questions? Guys, uh, let's let's maybe talk a bit uh, about what uh, did you see, and maybe someone has any really question or comments, or maybe agrees, okay. disagrees. 
No one. No. Okay. Then uh, we only can wait uh, until the GKE Kubernetes cluster uh, gets deployed. Yeah, probably I should have run that from the beginning of our, okay. Uh, yeah, what's really confusing me uh, that, well, it doesn't work as I expected. Maybe I missing something or I don't know, but yeah, with with the uh, applications like Go applications, yeah, it, it's kind of expected because we have two stages, right? We have to uh, do some changes in the code, but that's not enough. We have this compilation stage. We need to comp compile the binary. And for that, we are using uh, the configuration of Docker file like here. We we are using this intermediate container where we have all we need to do the compilation, right? But still, uh, I'm pretty sure somehow it should be possible to synchronize everything. And what what confuses me most that even when we use this this space Sync command. Okay, it works. It works. It uh, copies some files inside the container, but uh, but I don't really know right now. I I should get to know how to make the the process inside the container itself, not the pod, right? Not the pod, but the container itself to to get the stuff. Okay, let's see. All right, so let's see what we have here in the web console. Yeah, the cluster uh, is getting provisioned. And yeah, uh, something that I didn't cover, maybe it's obvious, but how does the uh, dev space know which Kubernetes cluster to use? Well, yeah, it, it's pretty easy. It uses the uh, cluster, which is uh, in the current context. Um, so if we go to the, to the local file, which is uh, pube config. Okay, I'm, I'm showing some certificates, but I'm going to remove it anyway. Uh, yeah, so um, text. text. See, in current context is minicubes. That's why uh, we are using minicubes for all this exercise. So when the GKE cluster gets deployed and we uh, connect to the to it, then the current context will be switched to the GKE. So yeah, that that easy. But anyway, uh, getting back to uh, these things, I uh, this synchronization doesn't work for me at least as I would expect. But yeah, this is something I need. Uh, I need to find out, find out, and maybe some of you will also <laughs> get interested in, the, in this and uh, Um, okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, this command builds all defined images and pushes them, but again, that's not what we need. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. Interesting, maybe here, maybe if we run the deployment. Let's see, let me change something again. Okay, the cluster is up and running. Cool. Let's get to it, let's try. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm not really sure how exactly it works, but let's just try. We just we're just going to okay switch the context or connect it will be precisely to connect to the Kubernetes cluster. Oh come on, why not as uh, ah. okay guys I don't think we uh we have that much time. Uh, my bad. I just missed to do. Uh, I just failed to install this this plugin. Uh, so we can try to do one more thing. Okay. So what do we have for now? Uh, get close. Switch it, it switch it to the to the GKE content. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, back to the new field. Nick, you. Yes. Oh, this guy is up and running. You're up and running. So if I go back to the, to the VS code, if I run, if I run, Okay, let's change something here. I don't know, add more, more of something. Okay, if, and if, yeah, the, uh, if, 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 okay, if I deploy this, but with adding a build and here. So the image got rebuilt. All right. But still, it, it never, never got restarted. Again, um, 
I don't know for now. I'll get to know how to do that right. But for now, uh, like if we go to the to the. Uh, sorry for interruption. Uh, you have some uh, warning, not warning, but message. Uh, new build image has the same tag in the last build that can lead to problems that the image during deployment. Is oh. Lead to problem that image during deployment is not. Oh. I see. You're right. That might be the problem. I'll. I'll different, definitely try. So I need to assign, okay. I need to assign, I got, yeah, yeah. I need to assign to each new build a new tag. That should be a versioning or something anyway. So, so like, because this, this image, Yeah, yeah, that's why it doesn't work. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I'm using this image and the tag, tag is always the same. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's why it doesn't work. I will check it. I will, I, I will, I will check it and yeah, if and I can share the result if, if you're interested. Anyway, uh, I think we are done. We. Uh, we spent all the time that we had. If you guys have any uh, more questions, please ask.